I'm ready. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the second edition of Shoot to Shit. It's your boy, Lou Nasty, and I am beyond the moon excited to introduce my guests with me. First, we got my brother, real life brother, the, uh, the Murphy to my Connor, if you will, Junior, a.k.a. Lunar Eclipse Junior Garza. Thanks, brother. And yes, one sir. of the best minds of wrestling, one of the guys who uh, helped train me to wrestle here, Robert Zamarippa. Hey, guys. I'm here. Junior, Rob, thank you guys for being here. And we're going to go ahead and get started on these SummerSlam predictions. First off, Junior, what do you got for Matt Riddle and King Corbin? You know, in all honesty, I think I got Riddle on this one. Uh, especially after seeing what happened on SmackDown, I think Corbin is more interested in just showing, you know, Riddle that he's a new guy, that he's the king. Uh, I think Riddle's been actually doing a lot of good work. I think he's progressed a lot from when he's coming in. I think he has that mindset to where this is his opportunity, and I think he's going to come out strong and do pretty good. Awesome. And I feel that – Robert immediately disagreed. I think as soon as you said Riddle, he started texting like, oh, fuck this guy and <laughs> this prediction. <laughs> I, I was Snapchatting like, hey, I'm on Zoom, guys. Like, <laughs> I was leaving it on my face trying to do a selfie on the camera. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I was like, yeah, as soon as you said was, like, oh, fuck, fuck Junior. <laughs> that's exactly what he was doing. He was like, I'm on Zoom and this guy's an idiot. fucking idiot guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I helped train this guy. <laughs> this fuck. <laughs> Hey, Rob, who do you got, man? I, I think Matt Real Matt Real is a great performer. Uh, he's probably probably a little bit more handicapped than he is, right? Like when he was at NXT, but uh, with his momentum, the way he's going, uh, Corbin Corbin is a great gimmick. You know, uh, he he plays the heel part well. I know people think he's boring and everything, but he tells a great story. I think he'll go really well as far as like trying to get Riddle over. Um, yeah. he'll, he won't lose momentum by losing because Corbin's always going to be the big heel. And, uh, yeah, so I think Riddle's going to go over either way. Yeah, and, moment, moment, and I feel like it's one of those things where, you know, everything's on the internet now with if somebody has a fallout or has something to say, it's within an hour. Like, oh, this person said this, this person did this. And with uh, Corbin, people were saying that he was very vocal about feuding with Riddle. Um, he was very upset about it. I feel like this is one of those things, like with the Meltzer, like you're not going to go over on Riddle. Riddle is the guy that you're going to put over right now, kind of thing. We'll catch you on the on the backside. So, like you said, I don't feel Corbin's going to lose anything from putting him over, and I think his time will come later on. And uh, this, yeah, I feel like this should be an opener and showcase Riddle, get everybody into it, and and like we all said, Riddle going over. Um, Next, I guess we'll let you let you go first, Sauce. Sonia Deville versus Mandy Rose in this no DQ. Now, no longer hair versus hair. It's a loser leaves WWE. <laughs> what do you think's going on there? Is a loser gets kidnapped from WWE match? Or? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, too, soon. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> you you know what? Like I don't. Like, I know, like, both of them, like, watched them both a lot. Uh, Sonny DeVille's really come up uh, as far as her skill, her character. I think they both got put on the main roster really quick. Yeah. And uh, as far as that, they, they took the ball and ran with it. Mandy's great as far as, like, what she offers because she knows what she is. Yeah. She knows, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be the eye candy. I'm going to do this. But she's got great, great athletic skill. And what she does, and Sonya Deville's just got overall just great skill as far as what her background is and everything like mm -hmm. that. Uh, as far as like who's going to leave WWE on this, I don't know if it's a gimmick or it's like somebody's like contracts up or whatever like that. But uh, I can see Mandy totally staying just for the marketing standpoint. Like <laughs> we need to keep her on rather than Sonya, but it, yeah. it's still a tough call. Tough call on that. Yeah, I like I said, we don't know what they're planning for this and that's a safe pick who do you got junior see and i was thinking the same thing uh with the hair versus hair match i was thinking you know the way sonia said i don't care if i go bald like it doesn't bother me and then when they changed it over to the loser leaves wwe the only thing i could think of is you know sonia's leaving with what happened 
um, maybe it took some toll on her and she just needed some time away. So I had, you know, DeVille losing right off the bat. But uh, like Sauce said, you know, with everybody coming up with her background in MMA, with Riddle coming up, I thought, you know, it was that big push that they were going to start giving to the MMA characters, uh, especially with, you know, uh, Sonya actually doing some stuff outside of WWE too. So I figured, you know, that was a great thing to do for marketing, but I don't see DeVille coming out of this one uh, with the win. I think maybe they have some other plans or she just needs some time away. So yeah, I, I don't think DeVille is going to take this one. And I feel like that's a really good point with uh, how Raw Underground. What is that? Y'all hear that? Is that a demon? Was that Sean? Yeah, was that Shane McMahon doing the Raw Underground back there Oh, somewhere? my God. <laughs> I think Sauce brought in some demons with the kidnapping comment. <laughs> Gave us bad juju, man. What the dick? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, like, what I was saying is, like, the same thing with Raw Underground, how they had a – Shafir and Jessamine coming in, like the, the former MMA, UFC people. So Sonya could have been easily put in a position like that on Raw Underground. But, yeah, I also see Mandy going over. Um, maybe Sonya is going to do like Becky and Sarah Logan and go have a baby. It's that's, not like, it's not like lesbians if, can't have babies. I've seen what if it's not her that's time. going to have the baby, though? What if it is? Because that was one of the things that I thought is, you know, what if Mandy and Dolph are deciding, you know, it's time to settle down, and then, boom, Mandy's going to come out. Like, we're going to have a baby, and Sonya's going to take over. I mean, it's a good possibility. Yeah. I mean, I'll get more into that later on down the card on what I feel, why Mandy will stay. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel loser leaves WWE is going to be Sonya. So, we're all in agreement on that. What U.S. title. What's that? What if Otis has the baby? <laughs> like May <We> Young's hand. <laughs> I was going to say, we have seen so many things in WWE. And they, they keep touting, you know, firsts. You know, the yes. first of this, first of this. So I think, you know, first time in WWE, Mel gives birth. It's going right. to be Otis. <laughs> Maybe it comes out of his, his briefcase or something, man. Right, and it's a dinosaur. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that a uh, U.S. title, Apollo Cruz, uh, MVP. Who do you got, Junior? In, I just think they've given it to MVP like in the beginning, and then took it from him and go Cruz. I honestly would like to see MVP with it. I think he still has a lot left in the tank. I think they could do some bigger things with Apollo uh, that they're just not doing. Uh, so I would say MVP. I think this is the best chance to do it, especially with the faction that they got going. Uh, maybe not give everyone the gold, but MVP being the leader of that little group, you know, managing Shelton and Bobby Lashley, I, I would say MVP all the way. Oh, yeah. I uh, definitely think that, too. Like, uh, that crew is, uh, is amazing, though. Like, uh, Lashley, Shelton, and MVP, uh, if you're going to take a heel run like that, uh, and the momentum's going. It's just one of those things. I think. I think ultimately, it's either going to be uh, MVP will win by getting some help from the outside, or uh, something happens that they beat Apollo, and then Apollo is going to give in and join the group, and then you're going to have an even bigger group. Oh, I didn't think of that at all. Yeah, from that, and give a Apollo this heel run because I think Apollo is uh, very gifted. But I think him being a face is really hurting him. I think if we do something where we could snap him into being a heel, he like me, like I'm creative. But like if they could do something <laughs> like like if they put him into a heel position or anything like that, I I could see great things happening. He can and that makes like, total can sense. I yeah. mean, Bobby Lashley's athletic. Shelton Benjamin, of course, is athletic. MVP. I mean, he can do some stuff still. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you got Apollo Cruz. That would be an amazing faction. We can, Nation of Domination Part Two, right there. Yeah, it could definitely be that. It could definitely be almost like a uh, just a high athletic underground shoot fighting Nation of Domination. You know? Oh yeah, well, the thing that they did in Raw Underground where they just beat up everybody, they could totally pull that off a few more weeks and just be dominant. Especially yeah. with the legitimacy of Lashley and uh, Shelton. With their backgrounds and yep. everything, Apollo Cruz with his, he's he's just a freak of nature as an athlete. Yeah, that's that's something that would be like definitely looking into. 
and Sauce, you just made the wheel start turning with that because I was going somewhere completely different with that, actually, and that made a lot more sense than I don't even want to get into what I was going to say, actually. I was going <laughs> to say this was going to be some kind of some kind of fuckery where Apollo goes over and they're going to do the whole 24-7 gimmick, you know, in this match, and something's going to happen, a couple of title changes, and MV- MVP – you know, puts Cruz over because I feel that this is about 10 years too late on, you know, giving MVP a strong run with Shelton and Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a good idea and it's awesome that they're doing it, but I don't, I feel like they're there to be like a regal towards the end, you know, where like he's going to come in, he's going to have some stiff matches, give people some good shit, but kind of give that rub off to the, the newer generation, which is Cruz. And I feel like the, 24-7 championship storyline should end tonight with these guys and have them do something else and Apollo actually get into a meaningful feud with somebody else. But like I said, you brought up him joining them. I'm like, fuck, that that makes so much sense. That's why Too he makes sense. the big bucks. Right, exactly. <laughs> Told yeah. you guys but, before. Well, please, somebody tell somebody to pay me then. Like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not going to get paid because it makes too much sense. So if it makes sense, <laughs> it's not going to make money with these kids. They, they, to spite the fans, to troll them, they do the total opposite. Even though they came out and said, we're going to give the fans what they want. And it's just, no, no, you're not. Right. No, you're, no, you're not. <laughs> Thank you. See, I think they need to give you a shot, Sauce. If they can put freaking the leader of Scooby-Doo to write for SmackDown, I think you could do some good stuff over there. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think I think he gave lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I would have go in for like, like a one day kind of like, hey, this is what I got. Let's try it for one day and see if it works. You know. Yeah. But what what sucks is like, say you wrote like you booked NXT and then they were pushing for like a shitty, like, throwaway segment and then that bombs like, oh, it's Robert's fault. <laughs> Get rid of that right. fuck. <laughs> it's like what? Guilty no. by association. That's how it yeah. always is. <laughs> Yeah, man, you need a scapegoat, bro. Get, bring some good ideas, like like a Bischoff, and then they're just going to shit on you after you're gone. So, yeah, right. I got with the dick anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll go Russo with it. I'll put the <laughs> – give somebody some regular celebrity a title or something and just like, hey. And then 15 years later, they can do a comeback documentary of how they're coming to wrestling for real now. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> and then you're going to be like, y'all are still talking about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I exactly. did something right. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, Rob, what do you think of the Raw Tag Titles, Street Profits versus Andrade and Angel Garza? Oh, Angel's, Angel is the next Eddie Guerrero to me. I love, I love Andrade also. You know, that, that team right there, it's just they're smooth and they're quick, and the Street Profits are just amazing. Uh, Montez Ford, I can see as being a future champion just on his charisma alone. Uh, yeah. That guy, uh, if you watch him as far as – Everything, everything that is not directly that he's not doing. So if you watch his facial expressions, the way he moves in the ring, everything he does that doesn't involve an actual move or anything like that, just part of his selling, you're like, God damn, this guy's, this guy's great. <laughs> Montez yeah. Ford is amazing. But yeah, it's kind of a tough call how they're going to do that. Who has the straps right now? The Street Profits. Street yes. Profits have the straps. Yeah, give it to, give it to Andrade and, and Garza because, you know, we're we're all Hispanics here. We gotta we gotta fight for our people here. <laughs> but yeah, and, uh, both, both teams are. Yeah, I can see that if they give them if they give them full reins of what to do and everything. Like man, I can see that being an outstanding match, especially Andrade and Angel Garza carrying that because they they do something unique every time in every match. Yeah, and you mentioned the whole Hispanic thing, and for a lot of the viewers that don't know. Uh, my work name in Still Juniors is Garza. So from one Garza talking about another, man, who, who do you got? Uh, and it goes back to what Sauce was saying. If they could give them, you know, a little more control on what they're doing, I think Andrade and Garza could have an amazing run. I just don't think they know what to do with them. They keep going from, you know, they're a great tag team to they have turmoil in between the tag team to back to a great tag team. With that kind of storyline, it kind of takes away from them being tag team champs. Um uh, because then I don't see a long title run with them if they keep doing that. You know, it could work towards, you know, they're feuding so much that the anger comes out and they keep winning and it builds them up. But with that being said, I think it's just going to 
end up costing them the match the way they're writing them off. And uh, that's kind of sad because I do think that they could have been an amazing tag team. Uh, they could be amazing tag team champs. They just have to get that writing better uh, and give them that big push that they need. Uh, Street Profits have had a good run. I think they can still do amazing things. Uh, so I think uh, Garza and Andrade should should take over the tag belts. And I feel my pick is going to be Street Profits. Um, I think with this whole storyline and stuff they had going on with Zelina poisoning, you know, Montez, him being gone for a while, that in reality, that, that story got old real quick, you know, and I feel like this is going to be the blow off match that's going to lead to bigger things from Andrade and Angel, maybe possibly them splitting and Andrade being the face. You know, kind of like us getting behind him, see us uh, getting behind him, kind of like they wanted us to get behind Del Rio when he did his face run. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel Montez taking some time off. And like you were saying, so I was like, Montez is, he's got it. He's got, he uh, has what we're trying to instill in tag team wrestlers now, like working the crowd. Like that, that's a huge thing. And that charisma that you have when you're in the corner and like you're saying facial expressions and how he sells, like it's, it's a, good dynamic that they have and I feel like they're going to keep the straps and looks like it's going to lead to the demise of Andrade and, and Garza so Sauce mm -hmm. how you feeling about Rollins and Dominic with Mysterio in the street fight <laughs> I think Dominic's going to surprise a lot of people I've seen I've seen him like over the years all the training videos Dominic posts and everything he's got skills you know and he was trained by Lance Storm right Right, right. And yeah. so I've seen a lot of his training. He's going to surprise a lot of people what he can do in this match. And I know there's a little teaser. They haven't shown it yet, but apparently he's going to have some really good gear. Uh, okay. Coming into the match. I don't know if he's going to wear a mask or not, but he's definitely going to have some very Rey Mysterio-like gear uh, coming in for what I was looking at. And uh, But, yeah, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, you know, re You know, basically, he's been in the business since he was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. he was involved in one of the greatest storylines ever exactly. <laughs> With the custody of dominic you know <laughs> yeah and i'm your the, messiah <laughs> one of the biggest like uh i want to say i want to say meltdowns but eddie getting pissed in a match like one of the most visible and audible like freak out. <laughs> I remember that. One. He was he was part of that match because right. Vicky didn't come out and do that <laughs> spot, and Eddie just the fuck, and then you associate all that with uh, with Dominic. Um, I'm gonna be saying so that shit all day now. Just where's Vicky? Where the fuck is Vicky? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> During this whole match, I think we're starting something, man. Uh, right. So you said you said uh, you got Dominic going over. Oh, I think Seth's still gonna go over. You know, Seth, Seth, okay. yeah, I don't think Seth's gonna you're gonna put him over, but I think Dominic is gonna get a major rub, and he's mm -hmm. gonna get he's gonna be on the roster, and he's gonna get some major time after this. You know, they're gonna show what he has, and uh, it would be kind of cool just to see not necessarily a tag team, but like Ray is kind of like a mouthpiece and a coach, and trying to bring up Donovan and kind of have Ray just kind of slowly, kind of sit back into retirement and have him become like a mentor. Okay, you know, for a kind of manager role kind of thing. I think that would be kind of cool, but I think Dominic's going to have, if he does really good, something's going to come of it, you know, even though okay. he's not going over, you know, it's really uh, one of those things. He's going to get the rub, definitely. Yeah. And what do you got, Junior? Uh, as much as I don't want to say it, I think I got Dominic. I think they're pushing him in a high roll way too fast. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to do good. I feel like there's going to be a lot of missteps uh, because of that. Uh, like Sauce said, I mean, I've seen training videos. I know he has a talent, but looking at the stuff that he's done now, you can see that nervousness in him. Uh, and then to be on a big stage on a pay-per-view so fast, uh, I just don't want it to end up kind of like the Lucha House party in the Street Profits when <laughs> – he just goes over trying to do Herc and Rana and just plants it on himself. I don't know if y'all saw that on SmackDown. That was terrible. Uh, no. As far as the oh. gear, man, I, to put a mask on him right now would be redundant. It'd be like Bruce Wayne coming out to fight the Joker and then the next week come out in his Batman suit. It just wouldn't make sense. I think he would have had to have come out with the mask at first, uh, maybe work towards taking it off later or, you know, a mask on, mask off gimmick. I just couldn't get behind it if he came out with the mask now that we've seen his face for like two, three months. 
It right. could be an homage as well because, I mean, you had, uh, I believe it was Psychosis, right, mm-hmm. that did that at ECW One Night Stand where he came out with the mask but took it off before. And then you have Andrade who paid homage to his old mask gimmick. You had a well, he would come Shirai. Out and take it off, yeah. Yeah, Io Shirai with, with the mask thing. So, I mean, that, that could be one of the things where it's just like an entrance thing. I was um, hoping he, maybe he, like uh, Rey Mysterio when he came out in San Diego with the POD, you know, the big headgear and stuff, and then took all that off afterward. I was hoping somewhere along the lines of that, you know, an homage to his dad when he came out yeah. with POD and just big, you know, native headgear, just blah, Aztec stuff. Well, it, it could be one of those things where maybe he just – it's like a like a war paint type thing where maybe for him to get in the zone and want to, you know, fuck somebody like Seth Rollins up who's leagues above him, and he has to do like a Demon Balor type gimmick where he needs the mask. Yeah. He needs the mask to have that, you know, power behind him, you know? So it, he needs that eagle power. Yeah, power. <laughs> he needs that eagle power. <laughs> Give me no nutrients. <laughs> eagle well, before, <laughs> I, before I give my prediction, where do y'all feel Dominic is going to go after this? Oh, he's going straight. He's going to be mid card, <laughs> yeah. which is which is the best spot to be, I think. I straight know. demotion. <laughs> I think Sauce has given him a lot more credit than I would have well, uh, right now, up. since he's not going through NXT and doing all well, that. Everything that I've seen so far. No? no. Oh, y'all are back. My bad. <laughs> y'all froze up. I was like, what happened? I think I think Dominic's gonna go. Maybe a little less than mid card. I don't think they'll have very much for him, especially after Rollins. I mean, where exactly do you go after that feuding with Garza and some of the other luchas? Uh, I see after this one, whether he wins or not, it's just going to go kind of lower than mid card, and then try and find something for him since they probably owe. Did you cage your kids, Junior? Huh? Did you cage your kids? <laughs> Is that what's going on right now? No, I put them on a leash outside. They're probably scratching at the window, though. Okay. Got it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the Chihuahua. That's what it is. Oh, I was going to say, I have one of those. <laughs> we're too Mexican sauce. <laughs> Did you say we're too Hispanic? Right. <laughs> I'm not 100% Chihuahua sure if he's stuck bro. in the closet or if he's outside the door. We got, uh, we got two Chihuahuas over here. Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, mine was doing that the other day. Uh, well, because, like, I was talking to some of the guys on the uh, Walmart page, and they feel a couple of them think that Dominic is going to turn on Ray and join Ooh. Rollins. Yeah, and I, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I didn't think it would happen, but you know, Dominic coming in, they keep advertising him on and off as Dominic Mysterio. Where like, you know, Ray had to take a while to drop the junior, you know, on on his end, uh, Charlotte. It took a while for them to acknowledge her as Charlotte Flair because she was just Charlotte for the longest time and give that rub off as a Mysterio. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of a foreshadow. Like I've, I've already uh, am passing the reins to you and him doing a fucking Russo gimmick like in Ready to Rumble. It's like, you're not my dad, you know, and, <laughs> and turning on him. Or they, they feel like that could happen, which I, I think it can. But I don't think with him getting his ass beat that it was – you know, to trick his dad. I don't think that taking those kendos and mm-hmm. getting back at them was telegraphing him turning. Now, do I feel like Dominic versus Ray is in the cards for WrestleMania? I feel like that would be legit, but I don't feel like it's going to happen tonight. And I feel there's a lot more story to be told before I think um, he's going to go to NXT eventually and – you know, own his craft and earn that spot on the roster because he's taking a, a lot of roster spots. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like Dominic's going over. The story's going to play out to eventually Dominic versus Ray, maybe even a mask versus mask. But tonight I feel there's something's going to happen. Dominic's going over. I think if something like that happened, it would be more of like, you know, teacher versus student. Like if you want to take over the Mysterio name and keep it going, you have to beat me, which I don't think should be hard since he was going to retire and he was getting beat by everybody. But I can see something like that happening. But I don't think it'd be like a heel versus face. It'd be more like a, if you want this torch to keep going and support our family in that, it would be like you have to beat me at WrestleMania type thing. Well, the dude lost an eye in his 
his real dad had never beat Ray, so maybe he's gonna carry on that legacy. You see, they need to bring that storyline back. What if that's what if he does turn and then all of a sudden it's like years later, found out Eddie was my poppy, and it's like I'm not Dominic Mysterio, I'm Dominic Guerrero. Yeah. Uh, or what if it's legit like WrestleMania, he faces for his actual custody again? <laughs> like, I, in in daddy, a briefcase or some type of thing hanging above the the my social security <laughs> card. I need that, Dad. We're going to put Ew. it in a briefcase. Above Green card there. on a pole match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and also on the, on the Walmart, like I said, Paige, we have a little group chat. And uh, they were saying, I'd be so pissed but relieved if this whole time Eddie Guerrero just comes out like, I said I was dead. I lied. <laughs> and then comes out and like he escorts, you know, Dominic to the ring. And it's like, man, this is fucked up. But uh, right. hey, man, this is awesome. <laughs> what I'm it, down with it. What if it's a hologram? Oh, uh, <laughs> that'd be legit. No, because then we'd have that fucking nasty ass. Excuse me, and then comes <laughs> out and it's like, no, you weren't dead this whole AW, time. Bro. You owe me child support. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was employed. Come on, man. She was employed the whole time. And yeah, she's she's an AEW now. Yeah, so. she is. Yeah. Sure. Right? Work. Well, I mean, you, you leave and they stop paying you. <laughs> so what else right. do you do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have the uh and that back to back women's championship match. I believe the first one, storyline wise, they said it's gonna be Bailey versus Asuka, followed by Sasha versus Asuka. Uh, Junior, what do you got? Uh, just the way I think they would play it off, I don't see Asuka coming out with either belts. I mean, in my head, I was thinking Banks helps out Bailey retain it, but since she was laughing at her, you know, on SmackDown, Bailey doesn't help her out and, you know, gets the raw belt back and then Bailey and Banks feud after that, but I just don't see the whole, you know, Oscar two belts thing, and I don't really see her beating Bailey. Uh, I think this is going to be the start of the feud for Banks and Bailey, and them going for the the SmackDown belt. So I say Oscar for Sasha's belt, the Raw Championship, and that's it. I think that's where okay. it's going. Oscar, the the Raw Championship with right. Banks. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Was that was that toilet demons, toilet? bro? Demons. <laughs> Are you on the pot? That's why you got that green screen. <laughs> me? No. I, got I don't know if you can see it. There's a there's a shelf behind me. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to turn it off. <laughs> I could totally see. I could totally see Oscar winning both belts. I could totally see it as if uh, she goes with the uh, Bailey first. Sasha might. Miss a cue that causes Bailey to lose the belt, and then Oscar goes into the next match, and out of out of spite, Bailey causes Sasha to lose the second belt, and it's yeah. going to implode that team and have the feud be finally the feud between Bailey and Sasha. The, From you know, the final the final stretch to the payoff of them actually separating, and I was actually <laughs> thinking something pretty similar to that. Uh, I've been saying this since the whole Charlotte Sasha feud where they kept, you know, switching the belt back and forth, the hell in a cell thing. They keep pushing, which, okay, I don't have a problem with female equality. I'm just going to put that out right now. But when they keep, when they keep pushing, you know, first time female for this, first time female, this, whatever, and we're going to main event kind of thing. And then, um, um, they're trying to get Charlotte to the level of Ric Flair, like mm. as far as like title reigns, like, Oh, she's a whatever time champ. Now she's a whatever time champ. Like right, right. They're, they're trying to pile on accolades for the females today for like a hall of fame package, because a lot of them are retiring early, you mm -hmm. know? So now if they were to retire tomorrow, next year, Bailey or Sasha is going to be in the hall of fame. Like, you know, we had Bailey two belts, we had Sasha two belts, you know, and they're going to, like I said, have these accolades. So I feel uh, at first, I was thinking Oscar for both, just so that's another accolade for Oscar's eventual Hall of Fame induction, like Oscar two belts at one point. But like you were saying, I feel Bailey's going to retain the the first match because her and Sasha, even though they don't need a belt with the story that they can tell, I feel like that's where the belt would leave. Um, 
Sasha, sorry, I, I'm I'm way mixed up on this. So Oscar wins Bailey. Sorry, Oscar wins Bailey because I want Oscar to feud with Lacey Evans. So Lacey is the newly turned heel. So mm-hmm. they they could tell a story where as a uh, um sorry Sasha retains and her and Bailey are gonna feud on Raw. So Asuka takes that to SmackDown, feuds with the with the heel in, in Lacey Evans, whereas Sasha keeps the belt and um, they go towards their eventual breakup. And I, I think that's what's gonna happen. I was I was way <laughs> everywhere on that one. I'm sorry, but that's what I, I feel is gonna happen. Bailey and Sasha retains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm guessing at the next pay-per-view, that's when they'll lose the tag belts and keep going with that. Yeah, because they don't they don't need that. Like I said, that's that just just taken away from other stories. Like uh, I I love Bliss Cross Applesauce. I feel like that should have gone on a little bit longer. Right. You know, with their with their run and Iconics aren't doing anything, and they're pretty pretty talented. There's so many tags that they can just throw it against, especially when they go down back to NXT. They have some good shit down there, so I don't know why NXT female team can't hold the straps and go on the main roster, get that exposure, and set the precedence for future female tags, or any tags for that matter. Like, you'll get that that rub, that push, that opportunity to do that. Um, now we will go into... You got a rat? Strowman versus The Fiend Jr. What are you and that rat got? I think me and the rat got... Man, you weren't lying about the ghost, man. Something was pulling my wires right here and there's nothing there. Jesus. God damn you, Sauce, and your freaking <laughs> predictions bringing ghosts everywhere. Uh, Is that the rat that was in Rowan's cage? <laughs> <laughs> now with Braun and The Fiend, I think this is going to be the perfect opportunity to push Braun. I think the Fiend is sadly starting to die down, which sucks. Uh, I love the whole character and reinventing himself again. I'm hoping tonight will be the night we can see Sister Abigail in Alexa Bliss form. Just total dark hair, sexy outfit for no reason, you know, to sell to the computer crowds at the Thunderdome. Uh, But I say Braun in this one. I think why go through all of that to give Braun the championship unless he was kind of a filler until they figured something big out with Fiend. Uh, but I think it's going to keep going with Braun. Braun's got it. So, so in this match, is it, in this match, is it, uh, it going to be like one of those where he has his Freddy Krueger powers like he did in the John Cena match? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I was going to bring that up. Like, I think it's going to be a normal match, if I'm not mistaken, because they just came back from that PG version of Freddy versus Jason Swamp match. I think that was the last match that they had. Which I yeah. still don't get. Technically, didn't The Fiend win that one for killing Braun Strowman? Shouldn't he have been the champion after that? That's what I didn't get about that match. Yeah, uh, I feel like there's always – they keep wanting to do those cinematic matches, and I'm not, I don't think this is one of them. Like I said, if, if I'm not mistaken, so I guess we're going to go off of if it's a normal match. And even with normal matches, I feel like The Fiend can do some weird shit because they can always cut, have him show up elsewhere, you know, and still be in a match. What if what if he, like, becomes, like, in that Thunderthome thing? Like, what if he becomes, like, every person on the video screen? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did that like is... that one on SmackDown where it just had like the whole fiend upside down and like all his facial expressions. I could see that like Braun, 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 and just like multiple varsity <laughs> shit. Do like uh do like the fun house, the mirror fun house thing, like which right. one is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can knock over for? all of the screens at once, it would be Braun. Yes. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Um I, oh wait, did you did you give your pick, Sauce? Um, I think if it's gonna be if 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 the fiend has his uh, reality warping powers, he's gonna win. <laughs> his ego powers. <laughs> yeah, his, re, his reality warping powers and his, yeah, his Rick and Morty kind of like I'm going to other dimension shit. 
I yeah. think he was going to win, but if it's going to be just a straight up, like, you know, if you're going to do a match with a little bit of gimmick to it, I can see Braun retaining because who else, who else huge are they going to have holding that strap, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, man, along the lines of what Junior was saying, that's kind of what my prediction was. I feel that if we can backtrack and the Fiend can be defeated, as we saw at Super Showdown with Goldberg. And Braun beat Goldberg at Mania. So the guy who beat The Fiend when he was on the biggest push of his career, I'm sorry, Bray Wyatt, you know, the biggest push of his career with his character um, was beaten by the guy who he's fighting beat. Um, But that was supposed to set up for a Goldberg versus Reigns match eventually to where Reigns was going to win the title. So this whole time, the title should have been on Reigns. And this could have been the transition to where the Fiend was going to fight Roman. So I feel like no matter who the title holder was, like Junior said, like the placeholder, which sucks because Ron's amazing. We've been wanting the title on him. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I feel like this was the time frame that the Fiend was going to come back and do his redemption post Goldberg angle. And I, I feel the Fiend is going to go over on this one. It's just his time, I think. Yeah, it's time. I think it's definitely time. He should, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and of course he can run with it. I mean, you got, they're, you know, they're, everything's in a weird situation right now with the way they film, the way they do their shows and everything like that. I feel like that character and that gimmick's built for that. It's going to be built for the cinematic. Um, you know, he doesn't have to be in that, in that arena every day. Yeah. To wrestle. He could, he, could, he could probably shoot promos and everything for months and they just plug and play every mm-hmm. time they need it. And it's yeah. still over. And so I yeah. feel like uh, Braun being at the top was great and it was amazing. But if the theme gets it and we're, we're really waiting on Reigns to come back because we know he's going to get the belt as soon as he does come back. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's the golden child. But I feel Braun would be better chasing the title right now leading up to a rumble or something because who knows how long this is going to last. Like I said, the, the, the belt, to be real, is going to Roman. But uh, Braun being at the top, and I feel would, would be better chasing chasing the Fiend. Because the Fiend with the, the Brian storyline was amazing, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, the, I know they cut it off uh, Miz's storyline because Morrison came back. But when he got, like, in the minds of people, like, they're doing that now. But Strowman is the champion, and he has everything to lose. So when he has nothing else to lose, and say we do have a Sister Abigail type thing, um, he can lose his shit, and that'll be for some good TV. Definitely, definitely, I see that. Yeah. So yeah, I picked the fiend. So sauce. Lastly, we have McIntyre versus Orton for the WWE Championship. I'm actually excited for this one. Like, I know Randy Orton. Randy Orton tells like more than anything. Like you see Orton Edge, like they're more than anything. They have the connection. They can tell the story. Orton gets kind of old after a while because he's like, oh, all I got is the RKO and I'm going to do it a creative way. But he's built up to everything, his storytelling. Uh, he's one of the best. He's one of the best in the business, psychologically and wrestling and everything like that. I feel like uh, McIntyre is still going to retain. Um, he's still going to go, go keep going. He's, he's amazing. Uh, I think he was the perfect person to – to get that strap. And I think it's going to be hard for him to drop it to somebody knowing the fact that he beat Lesnar, you know, how are you going to justify Orton when Orton got his ass beat by Lesnar? <laughs> yeah. In some, what, two years ago where he, he, you know, busted him up, yeah. busted him up and everything like that. I, I'm sure there's going to be uh, another thing I would probably think into is that Orton uh, edge might come out and help Orton win. And they kind mm-hmm. of make amends you know, make amends and try to start their team up again with, with uh, Randy Orton with the belt. But other than that, I, I see Drew McIntyre retaining. Um, I think he's a great champion, uh, especially with his redemption story and everything like that. I actually have this theory that um, his gimmick was booked ever since he signed to WWE. <laughs> Vince is like, hey, we're going to sign you. But in 10 years, you're going to be the champion. But this is what you're going to go through. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's, that's exactly what happens to him. I think yeah. everything was booked for him. All the, the indies, TNA, 
him coming back, <laughs> you know, everything was all booked by Vince. <laughs> like, so we just got to wait, week. what, like nine more years for, for Slater's story, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Drew McIntyre is great, man. I, I think uh, as far as legitimacy to the title, um, he's been the best since Brock. Um, but, yeah, he needs he, – he's just got it at a bad time. Yeah. You know, he, he got this through the pandemic where I think if he was in front of crowds – because, you know, this, this past Royal Rumble where he got the rub and he won the Royal Rumble and he got it over Lesnar. Yeah. Uh, they really said a lot. And that was like probably one of the best Royal Rumbles anybody's ever seen in years. Uh, so, so yeah, for him to carry that momentum, then the pandemic happened. It was just like, oh shit, but he's still doing good. His promos are great, everything. So I think more than anything, I mean, uh, if Orton does win, it's Edge coming in to help. If not, uh, yeah, Orton and, and McIntyre are gonna put on a great match. Yeah. Yeah. Junior? Uh, Kind of like sauces. I'm excited to watch that match too. I think uh, as far as Drew has come, the storylines that they've set, you know, and going back to the way, you know, Randy got beat by Brock Lesnar, you know, the way he says it now, you know, I wasn't the legend killer then. I was kind of complacent. I was just coasting of where I was going, bringing back that kind of monster mentality that everyone has now. That's like his legend killer is Bray Wyatt's fiend. You know what I mean? Uh, Drew McIntyre's coming up. They've been playing the whole storyline towards, you know, you got fired because you didn't have it. I've been here type storyline. I think they've played it perfect till now. I think this could be a perfect time for Randy to get another title run, see where that goes. Uh, but at the same time, you know, as much as you push Drew up and made him look as good as he has and as well as he's doing, like Sauce said, you know, his promos have been better. You know, his in-ring ability has been phenomenal. He's done a lot more, shown a lot more. Uh, either way this goes, I think it'll be great for everybody, but I see McIntyre retaining and, you know, pushing himself to a higher level. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to take away from this match. I know it's going to be great, but I am more about looking ahead, right? So I look ahead. Karrion Cross just won the NXT title last night. Right? Spoiler <laughs> Against Keith Lee. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Damn it! Fuck. So I'm I'm thinking Sir Survivor Series coming up, which was it's now more like a like a brand split thing, right? Kind of like a NXT Raw versus, versus SmackDown, Raw versus Smackdown yeah. you know, yeah, versus NXT type thing. Where uh, I've said this since Drew came back, like he's a fucking monster. Like he's a lot taller than what he looks like, and you know, us running ropes, I'm taking five, six steps to get to the other. It takes like two and he's already on the other side. Like, I feel like the ring is just too small for a man this big. And I think the same thing when I was, you know, watching, you know, carrying cross, like, man, these guys move like they're smaller than what they are, but they're monsters. So I would be so down. Like, I feel like that's a, a dream match of McIntyre versus uh, carrying cross. And if the fiend is in that mix with like how the fiend is, Carrion's like TikTok thing and just McIntyre fucking shit up, you know. Like you were talking about the Rumble and he, Brock Lesnar, took out half the roster until he got that Claymore, you know. So I feel like that's that's gonna be Drew retaining so we can set up for that dream match at Survivor Series. But also with all the fuckery that led up to this match with Randy Orton low blowing Ric Flair. I know you mentioned Edge how he do, might do a you know, return, like, interference, whatever. He's supposedly out for, what, six to eight months, and he got injured a couple months ago. Uh, I feel that it's not going to be like Heath Slater in the Legends, like, jobbing out, getting his ass beat, but I feel like there's going to be a chain of finishes that he's going to take at the end, one being probably a sweet chin music leading into a Claymore, you know, because mm -hmm. he tried to take out Shawn Michaels, you know, on Monday as well. So I feel like I said McIntyre is going over and like I said, the finish I feel is everyone coming back, you know, the legends that he killed, maybe like I said, a uh, fucking big show punch, whatever the fuck it's called. I can't remember. <laughs> my McFoley, McFoley coming out, you know, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Yeah. That just leads into the, to the Claymore and that'll be, that'll be it. Cause you're saying Randy Orton, 
can tell stories. And I, I feel like this is going to be over for him and McIntyre, but it can lead to something else. Um, my pick, McIntyre. And before, you know, we cut this out, guys, I wanted to ask, like, what do y'all feel about how we're going to get a Money in the Bank cash in tonight? Oh, I totally forgot about those. Because they really don't talk about them anymore, do they? Right? I think that's no. the reason. I think they kind of hold it back so when it happens, you're like, holy shit. Like, when we started talking about Otis earlier, I was yeah. like, oh, shit, that dude does still have the money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he had that. Yeah. And, and that's what I was saying earlier with the Mandy Rose thing, why I feel like she would stay. She would be uh, a factor in this cash in. You know, <laughs> so why would she lose and, you know, her, her man that they've been pushing this storyline on go cash in without her? You know, because that just, I feel, wouldn't make any sense. I think sense. if you're going to cash in on anybody, it would be like the Braun and the Fiend, one of those two. Because I feel like that match may go on a lot crazier than, you know, Orton and McIntyre. I think that'll be a fight. Uh, I just don't think it'd be as big if he cashed in on McIntyre and Orton than it would with the Fiend and, and Braun. But at the same time, if he cashed in there, I could see, you know, the Fiend, if he won, you know, just disappearing and then not a real cash in or, you know, Braun doing something because he's pissed off from the match and then him not winning. So I could see the downfall on that one. But I just can't see it being cashed in on Orton and, and McIntyre. I would totally uh, love to see a Bray Wyatt Otis feud, though. To see how that would go. Because could you imagine oh him God. punching the fiend, the fiend not moving, the fiend punching him, and him start doing his little dance, like just yeah. back and forth. Oh, no sell oh. back and forth. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. The caterpillar that leads into that fucking whatever. Yeah. Brain pass, like, oh, God, you know, like his, his, his facial expressions, man. I feel like that would be some good, entertaining stuff. I don't know if they'd give it to us, though. I don't think we're ready for <laughs> Otis right. versus the fiend. Otis is eating a steak and. Bray Wyatt's like, it's worms. You're eating worms, you know. Yeah. Like oh, shit. Like Lost Boys, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. He's like, you man. like your maggots, Otis? <laughs> like Otis I don't think Otis would even mind. Otis would have just been like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just put it all in the blender. Like, <laughs> it's disgusting, man. Uh, Sauce, I'm glad you, you, you made it today, man, because uh, – so much genius coming from that noggin, man. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> I've been keeping it going, man. You know, I took a, I took like nine years off of the business and I started wrestling again last year. I'm getting kind of a break with the pandemic right now, but yeah, uh, me and there's a couple of core group of guys here in Dallas that I, I fuck with a lot. And so, you know, helping them out, helping them get to the next level and everything. And also trying to take some bumps myself, you know, yeah. <laughs> so 41 years old trying to get back in the ring but it's been fun man uh you know you, you come to find out like how much you miss the business you know and yeah. how much how much you you miss that creative outlet with everything and so uh so yeah it's been fun man it's been a great time <laughs> exactly and um uh, and on my end junior i know you're still doing it as well but you know that little that little itch hits me you know every so often and uh of course i don't know if we could talk about it but i know there was something in the works this year that I was, you know, training for, I just needed to oh, get yeah. some bust off. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, we, we should be on the lookout, but man, it's, it's awesome that you got back in, you know, and it's right. Oh man. Awesome when he talks about just those entertaining. goosebumps, man, it's, it was on a whole different level. Cause I mean, like we said, me still doing it with you going off and, you know, joining the military and doing your thing with your family and then sauce and everybody kind of leaving when you look at locker rooms and you don't see the guys that you came up with and see it anymore, you know, it, it took a lot out of what we were doing. Uh, like with me, I enjoyed wrestling, but when you don't see the guys you love in the locker room, it, it eats at you. It took, it takes it away slowly and then you kind of lose that. But when I saw sauce over here, when he came back, man, it was like, he didn't miss a step. Like it was, it was back in the day when it was like, Oh shit. When I was still coming up and you get that, Oh man, sauce is working. Sauce is doing this. It that feeling was amazing because it was like you know I was eighteen, nineteen again, and you're looking at your trainers and you're looking at them moving, and it was just it brought that drive out of you again, where it's like, man, this is what we do it for. And I mean, if we could do that for me, you know, being thirty years old coming out, imagine like the things that we could do. And that's that's what I loved about it. Yeah, 
And, Don't get uh, it wrong. I'm still slow as fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah, man, we should definitely, you know, get together. And, and this is a story that I feel like should be told, especially later on uh, down the line on, you know, sauce, your, your origins, you know, where you got and that, that break in between and, you know, the legacy that lived on between when, when I did it and junior to this day and yeah, man, bring, bring your peeps on as well. You know, like I'd like to, t- you know, get the insight of uh, kind of like being a dad, you know, like your mm-hmm. first kid, all the you know, evolution <laughs> to, you know, the last kids, you know, the, the sauce that they're getting by right. you know, the ones that we got. So I feel like that'd be a, a good story. And uh, oh. I'm going I'm to keep you guys on, but uh, we'll, we'll end this one. Um, and is there any, any last, last minute? Oh, by the way, like I said, did, did y'all feel like there's going to be a, a cash in tonight? I don't see a cash in happening. I yeah, think it's not. I think it's gonna happen at WrestleMania. I was thinking SummerSlam, maybe. I think that's, that's hottest. That's literally what's happening tonight. <laughs> is that is that what it is? <laughs> it's literally it's happening. Are we on SummerSlam Saturday? Survivor. <laughs> Can you afford to pay me to wrestle I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see that in my notes. Is this not NXT Takeover? Super bra. <laughs> <laughs> So All these pay per views start to. I thought it was you know SummerSlam or you know Thunderdome four or something. I don't know. Yeah, I I like your idea though of the um the cash in that leads to a disappearance, so it's not really a cash in. So I think they could tease for that and tease for a uh, Otis Fiend feud. So I I I'm on board with that actually. A Fiend goes over a uh, cash in tease. So nice. Yeah. So Rob, it's a junior. We appreciate you guys. Oh, wait, hats check. What, hats, what hats are y'all wearing? I got Dallas. You got that every- big D. He's got that Joker. I got uh my old my old ship hat. It says look nice. ahead. I was saying that earlier. Look ahead. <laughs> nice. Totally unrelated. I didn't even think about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck. I'm such a tool. Just plug it into the ship. I'm not even on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Junior's on a hot topic over there. <laughs> I wasn't wearing my douchey Ed Hardy stuff though. See, I, I, I should have known. <laughs> I got, I got, I, I got Ninja on a bicycle. Oh, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, and I got, I got them Boondock Saints, you know. So, oh, oh you match Junior's tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I guess they both are my Connie's uh, Connor man. But yeah, when Junior was a. Uh, saying earlier like yeah we'll get a, a all black hot alexa <laughs> he's got the like said the hot topic cat i was like i should have known <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> should have fucking known you can't just take the colorful harley quinn-esque <laughs> alexa you want an all black sister abigail Jeez. I I like, like, hot topic gimmicks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's gonna go online tonight to get that twenty percent off code that expires whenever these Alexa See, Bliss shirts. Come I want out. her to go from that Alexa Bliss to the freaking Bobby Boucher's girlfriend from the craft type hot topic oh, gimmick to yeah, short hair. Vicky Valencourt. <laughs> yeah, I want her to go all well, out. You know, not, not, the, not the girl from American History X though. No. Not that oh one. no. Jesus. <laughs> She's terrible. <laughs> like, Still what a bad person. Still would, but yeah, like I said, I, <laughs> <laughs> Junior, appreciate you being on. Rob, appreciate you guys. Hey, let's let's do this again, man. Uh, All right, we'll sign it off.